So uh, what I'm going to do here is try to cover the, the notion of secure access and why it's important and why we at Pulse Secure think this is the way forward for securing access. So first of all, the whole idea of access is that it, it's actually an important function of a company. Many customers view access as a kind of buy side effect of having something and then they need to give some access. From us, access is the core of everything. Okay? Now, where are we in this industry if you look at a 100,000 feet view? Well, there are a couple of things that is happening as mega trends or things that has happened. BYOD is one of them. BYOD is important not only because of BYOD. A lot of customers don't do BYOD and they say we're not allowing it. That's also BYOD because this is all about getting control of what's actually on your network, what is connected there, and you need to have the visibility to know what should be there and shouldn't be there. So BYOD is a broader topic of knowing what's actually on your network. Okay? The other part of there is cloud. And I talk to a lot of security guys and they say cloud and they're a bit hesitant, but guess what? The app has left the building. That decision is already made. A lot of stuff is already moved to Office 365, Box, Salesforce, other types of applications. This is, of course, a, a stress for anyone that is security, uh, you know, mentally into security, because all of a sudden data might bypass your, all your security gateways you already have. So how are you going to get control over that data going back and forth into a cloud service? And what is connecting and who is connecting? Okay? The third part of this is actually something that might be less visible for a normal enterprise, but IoT, uh, it's a wide term, Internet of Things. What is things? To us, IoT is that we have a truck manufacturer, we have a car manufacturer, uh, two, two different ones, and they're really eager to connect their vehicles into services three, you know, 365 days, 24 hours a day, and they need to make sure that is secure. Initially, we'll mostly be reading out data, but what if I then can actually change data? Uh, and that would be really, really uh, problematic if a big truck all of a sudden gets hijacked or things is happening with it. So security is also, from an access perspective, really important there. So these are the three trends that we were kind of hogging onto when we created Pulse Secure two years ago. Now, the new reality for most of our customers that we, we, we come and, and talk to is that they have seen an explosion on the client side where clients require to be able to use new types of devices. They want to be able to use their laptops, uh, their private stuff, their uh, tablets, their iPhones, etc. Meaning a challenge for the IT administration because it could be managed, it could be unmanaged, it's new OSs they don't know of, and they have far less control. So that has led to an explosion of typical gateways that are sitting in the data center. You need a gateway for your VDI connectivity, for your MDM. They are coming down with a gateway for your mobile devices. You have the traditional VPN gateway. You have some NAC appliance. You have some other things. And now cloud comes and makes it even more cumbersome. So the, the, the customers we talk to normally have six or seven of these gateways as a minimum. Reality here is that this is not only a big CapEx problem, but it's really a bigger OPEX problem. You need to host specialists in all these kind of gateways and different OSs, first of all. But I would tell you the bigger problem over time will not even be the CapEx or OPEX. It will actually be how do you then provide one cohesive policy for your users if you have all these different gateways with their different capabilities. The other th thing that this drives is a bad thing for the end user, because if the end user need to have a separate client when they're on, on, the, on the run versus when they're on-premise, and they need to behave differently at home versus in an airport, that becomes a huge issue to, to, to an end customer. An end customer doesn't even care what a VPN is. They don't want to know, and they shouldn't have to know. What we need to do is provide a simple way where there is a unified client following the user for all their different use cases, and then have that for all the, these various OSs where the user doesn't have to know, it should just work in the background. Okay? Finally to that, we have the data that is present both internally, but then also somewhat in some private cloud or somewhat in some infrastructure as a service or even as a cloud service. And we see this big move of Office 365, for example, as, as a good showcase of that. Almost any, every customer I talk to either have already moved to Office 365 or they have a project of moving to Office 365. Okay. So the way we address this is basically on the mobility side, building this unified client, one client that is there for your various use cases. Okay. 
The other side here is to do data center consolidation using our technology to allow you to terminate the mobiles, the, phone, uh, the PCs, all these types of various things into one gateway where you can set up one policy. So it doesn't not only lower the capex, it also lowers the opex, but finally it also solves the problem of unified policy. Okay. Does it mean you can replace all of them? Probably not, but you can heavily reduce them. And I think that's really a good step to take. And the final part of this is then handling this hybrid IT cloudification. How can we make, and to be honest, I worked with these products in, for 14 years now, under Neoteris, NetScreen, Juniper for 10 and a half years, and then finally into Pulse Secure, where we finally got into the focus areas that I think we should have done even previously, is the fact that we've done all the time, all these years, we've been doing three things. Authentication, compliance, and role-based access. Those are the simple things we do. Okay? Now, if we can provide that to internal resources, we just made Cloud Secure that does exactly the same, but now the, the resource in the cloud, which means that we can build authentication, compliance checking, and role-based access into Salesforce, into Office 365. And guess what? Most customers are not going to go cloud 100%. It's going to be the need to both have the internal and the external. And we can do that with one solution, one silo, instead of having a CASP for the cloud and doing this for the internal. Then you're there again building all these gateways. Okay. So Pulse Secure is in this game for that specific purpose only, that secure user device thing, whatever device it is, access. There's a lot of other companies that we're competing with, and they do piecemeal of this. They do some other stuff plus some remote access. They do some other stuff plus some mobile access. But we're really what we are attacking is this core to make sure that we can have one solution. And the reason for that is very simple, because this is the need. The need is not only when I'm out and about. It's unmanaged devices. It's managed devices. It's devices when on the go. It's devices that are stationary. There's devices that never leave the company. It's visitors. It's my Wi-Fi. All of these things are access. And that's how we view it. All of these access needs to be consolidated into one solution to, to get one policy assigned wherever the user or device. Okay? So if we look at our solution, Secure Access, what we're mainly known for is this. Okay, we're known for that remote user access where an employee with a Pulse client moves around or having services for contractors or other types, so like a Swiss Army knife for the remote access use case. Reality, though, is what happens now is we need to also address the fact of what happens when a user gets on-premise. And with our client, for example, it's location-aware, so it would automatically, the user would not even need to do anything. We'll just move from being outside into inside, completely handover. And this is serviced by another service called Policy Secure. The reason we have two services here is they're pretty much the same, but they're located at different places. The, the termination of tunnels needs to happen on the DMZ, but you don't want to have the brain controlling your firewall and switches on the DMZ. So we basically separated these two into two services, but they're federated. So there's a federation layer, so it doesn't matter if I have multiples of these uh, connections from outside or multiples of, of these boxes for inside, they'll all federate it into one system. So if I'm connected somewhere, it doesn't matter. What we've done now in the latest release as well is then doing that federation also for all the cloud services. So even if the user is sitting on-premise doing a .1x connection to his Wi-Fi, we'll still use that connection and that validation for accessing into the cloud service. The same way as a user would sitting on the outside will have to go back to us for the, this compliance checking and role-based access and authentication. Okay. So that's really the ecosystem there. And in order then to get visibility into this, we have Pulse One as an overarching architecture. And that is really there to just give you a visibility of all your services, looking up who is connecting from remotely, who is now connecting locally. We have a profiler built in, so it will show you all that profiling data, what's actually there in your network. But we go way beyond that, but also showing who is actually then remotely connecting to your network into one location. Ultimately, this tool will then also suck up all the information about the cloud services as well as the users, so we can basically then search for something like Jonas. OK, that's me. He's currently connected with his iPad there, and he's accessing these services while He's also connected with his MacBook, and he's connected over there on that Wi-Fi doing that thing. That's ultimately what the, the visibility we want to create up in the Pulse One. 
So at Pulse One, we have one more thing, and that's the workspace. So that's basically a lightweight EMM MDM to cater for the provisioning of mobile devices, uh, provisioning like managed applications into a containerized environment. So you can, by by ease saying that I know that uh, this is a corporate, uh, you know, this is a device that I have control over. It's an iPhone. It's been used for the cloud service, and I, as an admin, have control over the compliance. No jailbroken. If it becomes jailbroken, I could just wipe the corporate content of that device uh, as an admin or automate it as a policy. So the idea here was actually then to run you a, a nice demo. Uh, I wasn't aware that I was had to hand over my presentation there and leave my MacBook somewhere else. Um, so I would have loved to. But if you want to see that demo, I can show it to you in, uh, in the presentation or in the area outside where we have our, our small boot, uh, where I will be able to show you this in reality if you're interested. If you're not interested in, in viewing that, um, I would basically just say thanks and for taking the time and listening to me, and I'm open to any questions you might have. So I, I know questions? I left a lot of time, but it was planned for that nice demo. So, okay, the, the <laughs> but I can run it again. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any questions for Jonas? About this wonderful presentation. Uh, excuse, excuse, excuse me, I will... Hmm. I will We'll walk to you and, mm -hmm. and can it's harder, it's harder, it's harder. Yeah. Uh, regarding the MDM type of uh, solutions, what kind of functionality are you uh, uh, offering? Uh, uh, for example, is it possible to verify if disk encryption is enabled, if uh, blood up your stuff like uh, up to date uh, anti malware, screen lock protection, uh, password uh, availability, that kind of stuff? Is yeah. that, can that be verified? Yeah, so, so the answer is actually two-pronged there because on our system, we have always done host checking, which we still do on the kind of typical laptop systems, Mac OS, Linux, uh, Windows, where we actually actively look for uh, AV, that it's there, that it's updated, uh, firewalls, if it's a disk encryption, all of that stuff is kind of covered by that host checking process. That becomes more cumbersome when you look at iOS and Android. Uh, the good news, though, is iOS and Android is, is encrypted by default these days. As soon as you force a pin code, it's encrypted encrypted on the iOS, a any, new, uh, any new Google device, Android device will actually come encrypted day out of the gate, or we can force it. So, so th that, that's, but that has a different way of being checked, so that's why you need either an, an other third party, so we can work with like Mobile Iron and AirWatch, um, Intune is on the, on, the, on the list as well, uh, and they do this provisioning and, and, and checking, but we also have in our own service this capability of doing that compliance check that you're not jailbroken, which is, to be honest, jailbroken and rooted is the most important one, because if they're not, if they are, then nothing is, you know, everything is void. Uh, but then we can also check for things like you need to have pass codes, you need to change them regularly, they need to be advanced, you must be encrypted, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? No? Jonas, then I would like to thank you for, oh, sorry, no? Yeah. <laughs> he was doubting, I was like, yeah, maybe, <laughs> no, 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 I don't think so, I don't think so. Okay. I'm happy it was so crystal clear. No questions. Excellent. And you're, as I said, welcome to come and see the, the demo of this as well in the booth if, you're, if you want to. Okay. Thank you. In that case, I would like to thank you, Jonas. Thank you very much. Give an applause for Jonas.